the ride to the Joint Air Operations Center. In the Shah's armored limousine from the memorial service at Mamat David Air Force Base was a quiet and pensive one. The Shah tried to keep his mind on the important tasks of running the war, but his thoughts kept drifting back to his son and how proud he was to pin wings of gold on his son's uniform. To thoughts of the two female Tomcat pilots who were laid to rest beside his son that day and how it seemed to hit the morning crowd differently. This was the first time that the Kingdom of Daimar was losing female military members on the front lines, and his thoughts turned to how just a few decades ago that would have never been stood for. His father, the Shah before him, would have never allowed women into the cockpit of an F-14 Tomcat, but he knew that this was the way the world was going, and if the Kingdom of Daimar was going to keep its seat, at the table with the great powers of the United States, United Kingdom, and France, the old ways of the Islamic clerics, Jewish orthodoxy, and Christian papacy would have to fade even here in the Holy Land. Finally, as the limo pulled up to the Joint Air Operations Center, the Shah swept everything from his mind with one final thought. The sacrifices of these women, no, officers of the Royal Daimar Air Force, were just as gallant as their male squadron mates. One had been making strafing runs along with her Rio to protect a small special forces outpost in the mountains when the Golden BB had pulled her Tomcat from the sky. The other dove into a dogfight with no expectation of survival as she and her Rio took on four MiG-29 fulcrums and downed three of them before falling victim to an R-73. But their actions had allowed a flight of AV-8B Harriers to escape the area unharmed. The stories of these pilots and Rios laying down their lives for their country is exactly what separates the Kingdom of Daimar from the Empire of Paran. A clash of the old ways of the clerics and the new wave of modernity, progress, and prosperity. Yes, no. With a new zeal and confidence in his mission, the Shah burst into the planning rooms of the Joint Air Operations Center to help the RDAF and USAF generals plan for the afternoon air operations in any way that he could. The Shah's intelligence staff quickly swarmed him and the situation now looked far better than it had even a mere 24 hours earlier. With the successful defense of the southern Beka Valley from the armored spearheads of the Empire of Paran Army, a major evacuation effort of civilians from Beirut can now commence, without threat of being cut off or encircled by the Paranis. But far to the east in the remote reaches of the Empire of Paran, the humanitarian situ situation was grim. Intelligent sources have suggested that the Piranis are intent on taking out their frustrations with the war on the small communities of Jews and Christians living in their far eastern mountains and Badia plains through max executions, and the Shah reminds his staff that a humanitarian aid and rescue mission is one of his top priorities. However, one simple fact remained painfully obvious to everyone in the Joint Air Operations Center from the lowly private to the highest general. The EPAF or Empire of Tehran Air Force has to be destroyed for any further progress to be made. EPAF MiGs continually intercept coalition strike packages while Mirages and Hinds harass Daimari ground troops and IL-76s fly tons of supplies into the Pirani heartland. 
The maximum effort strike on the EPAF will involve almost every combat aircraft in the RDAF. With dozens of wild weasels suppressing enemy air defenses as strike aircraft hit the MiG bases at Hama, Quiris, and Aleppo, in an effort to draw as many EPAF mirages and MiGs into the air as possible, only to be swatted from the sky by escorting fighters and fighter sweep flights. The strike will be a pincer attack to split and overwhelm the Pirani air defenses, with the United States Marine Corps aircraft based at H3 attacking from the east, with USAF and RDAF aircraft attacking from the west. The RDNS Suez, the former Admiral Kuznetsov class carrier Riga, will unfortunately not be playing a role in this afternoon's strike. After surviving a near miss with a torpedo attack by EPN submarines early this morning, she, along with her battle group, have transited to the Suez Canal and are now conducting their shakedown trials in the Red Sea. However, her carrier air group has been transferred to Kalkala Air Base and will participate in the attack on the airfields. This will mark the very first time the Royal Daimar Marine Corps will fly into combat with fixed-wing aircraft, utilizing their newly refurbished F-A-18C Hornets donated by the U.S. Marine Corps and U.S. Navy to outfit the new aircraft carrier. Beyond the carrier capabilities of the F-A-18C Hornet, the aircraft would provide another potent jet to take the fight to the enemy. With so many RDAF, USAF, and USMC aircraft committed to the all-out strike on the Pirani airfields, as per the new ATO, the USS George Washington and her air wing will be held in reserve to intercept any retaliatory raids the surviving EPAF aircraft and pilots may launch against Daimari territory, as well as cover egressing strike aircraft from any late interception attempts. As the Shah is briefed on the details of the afternoon strike, he knows his chance for revenge is finally at hand. The Sultan of Peran's youngest son is currently a MiG-29 Fulcrum pilot stationed at Hama Air Base and assigned to the 5-minute alert duties. He will almost certainly take off to meet the coming U.S. Marine Corps aircraft. Alright, alright, ladies and gentlemen, please go ahead and settle down now so we can get started with the mission briefing and get you all stepped out to your aircraft on time. As you all know, I am Colonel Spud of the Royal Daimar Air Force, so if you could swap over your kneeboard cards over to the Situational Overview and Roll Call card, we'll go ahead and get started. As you guys are well versed in now, we do not need to waste any ink on the Situation Overview. For the Roll Call, you'll find your assigned call sign, the frequency assigned for intraflight frequency, the aircraft type you've been assigned, the service of the aircraft that you've been assigned, because that's been mixed up a little bit with some RDAF pilots flying some USAF aircraft. The mission set that you've been assigned, whether that's SEAD, DAD, Escort, Fighter Sweep, or Strike. And please also take note of the fact that the SEAD and DAD aircraft uh, call sign theme is Secret Societies, whereas the uh, offensive counter air flights are set to be Frankenstein themed, and the Dracula theme is rounding out the rest of you guys for the strike flights. The rules of engagement, you guys are all very well versed in that at this point. Uh, it's visual or IFF ID as hostile required. Weapons are free on any hostile aircraft in the airspace. Flight into Peron is of course permitted as well. The strike flight will take us deep into the heart of the Empire of Peron today. So it will be a rather dangerous mission, but uh, I'll be right up there in the air along with all of you guys. And I'm sure that we'll all make it home together. So make sure that you guys all take care of each other today and keep an eye on each other's backs and each other's six o'clock. So let's go ahead and move on to the mission intel. Again, the mission intel has not changed all that much. You guys are pretty well versed in the order of battle for the Empire of Peron. However, we are going to be really kicking the hornet's nest today. So red air threats, expect to see all these different types of aircraft threats in the sky today, as well as the IADS threats. Please expect to see all these different SAMs potentially illuminating you and firing upon you. So please, please take a moment to take a look at the ranges for those various SAMs and the maximum altitudes those SAMs can reach you at. So I'm sure you guys, again, all very well versed in that stuff. So let's go ahead and move right along here. Communications flow. 
please make sure that your radio one or comm one or however it's labeled in your aircraft is set to the proper frequency for the mission comms flow plan. Your radio two should be tuned to your intraflight frequency on the roll call page that we just looked at to ensure that you can definitely talk to your wingman and get uh, orders from your flight lead. Ensure that uh, once you're on the ground there, just uh, listen to the ATIS and tune into your um, assigned frequency for the airfield. Um, and make sure that you also are well aware of the fact that uh, we've been having some logistical issues and of course some power outage issues. So your airfield may not actually be controlled when you start up your jet and check in with the ground controller or the tower. So keep that in mind guys, and if you are not getting any uh, response back and the airfield is uncontrolled, please treat that frequency as the CTAF frequency or common traffic advisory uh, frequency. I wanna make sure you guys are over communicating on these frequencies as opposed to under communicating. So that way we don't have any issues with aircraft uh, potentially running into each other while you're on the ground or taking off or landing today. The strike frequency is of course gonna be 305.00. Red Crown is the GCI in a USAF E3 AWACS that will be orbiting to the south of Damascus proper. The tanker frequencies are going to be displayed on the departure flow kneeboard card, so that way you guys can see exactly what the TACAN frequency as well as the radio frequency of the tanker you've been assigned to is, along with his expected ground speed as well as his altitude. For the recovery ATC agency, again, if you uh, call up on the ground control or the tower frequency for your assigned airfield for today and you get no response back from a controller, please treat that frequency as the common traffic advisory frequency. And again, please over communicate as opposed to under communicating on that frequency. Moving on to the departure flow plan, the Marshall plan is aircraft are going to Marshall at waypoint one today. So that is an error in the knee boards that have already been printed. So please uh, take your pen, scratch that out and please write over it. Waypoint one is the Marshall point for today. Uh, all altitudes for the Marshall are going to be assigned via ATC and that's potentially going to actually uh, switch over to being the strike lead for today is going to assign those altitudes. The push order for today is going to be Siad and Diad pushing first out in front to start engaging those SAMs, followed closely behind by escort and fighter sweep. And then, of course, the strike flights will be last onto the scene to actually drop their bombs on those airfields. And hopefully we can catch a whole bunch of the EPAF MIGs on the ground today. And that way we can just... Uh, clear out as many of the MIGs from the sky as possible and really gain that air superiority over the front line. For the RDAF and Royal Daimar Marine Corps strike package formation, Dracula 1-1, that's me as a strike lead, will be up front. And then we're gonna have Stoker 9-1 and Renfield 7-1. You guys are gonna be on the wings. Then our fighter sweep flights of Shelley 3-1 and Frankenstein 2-1. You guys are gonna be on the wings of Stoker and Renfield respectively. And Ludwig and Igor flights, they're gonna be uh, behind and offset up about 500 feet. So that way you guys can provide close escort to us no problem i will be detaching shelly 3-1 and frankenstein 2-1 flight to go out and freelance and hunt down and destroy any migs at your disc discretion the usmc strike package formation from h3 it's going to be nosferatu 2-1 flight is going to be the lead there crusader 4-1 is going to be on his right wing and then demeter 3-1 is going to be on the left wing of that strike package uh, Crusader 4-1 will be detached at some point in order to start engaging those SAM sites. Um, so Crusader 4-1, please make sure you are uh, aware of that and expecting to be detached. Tanker plan is down here as well. The uh, three tankers, Texaco 1-1, Shell 1-1, and Arco 1-1 are going to be out to the west. They're going to be in a tanker stack orbiting just off of the coast of Damascus. Or sorry, not Damascus, but uh, Beirut, that is. And uh, they will be on station and ready to give you guys any juice if required. H3 tankers, that's going to be Texaco 2-1 and Shell 2-1. They are going to be orbiting just to the northwest of H3, and that way if you need any juice before your recovery back at H3 pumping station, you are going to have plenty of gas for that. 
Um, the tankers will be on station to provide fuel on egress from the target area. We are not going to be refueling on the ingress to the target area in order to better keep to a time schedule to get bombs on target before sunset today due to some limitations on some of the systems of the Royal Daimar Air Force aircraft. Moving on from here, we've got our objectives and game plan kneeboard card. Um, these are just listing out all the different targets for all the various strikes and the egress point um, for those flights. So uh, our CAD and DAD flights are going to be attacking targets uh, assigned here. So a Colt and Freemason will be suppressing enemy threat emitters near Aleppo. Templar 3-1, our deed flight, they are absolutely mission critical for today. You're going to be destroying the SA-5 site at the airfield at Abu al-Dahur. So please keep in mind that that is mission critical. If, if we do not get that SA-5 site off the air, it's going to be able to cover both the Aleppo and Hama areas, and it's going to be firing very long range SAMs at our strike aircraft as they're trying to drop their JDAMs on the targets down below. So that is absolutely mission critical. Templar 3-1, you guys are the MVP for today. You guys are the most important flight in the strike package today. Crusader 4-1, you're going to be suppressing emitters near Hama and, of course, destroying any of those SAM sites as well with your uh, AGM 154s on board as well. You guys are going to be egressing as needed. You're going to be cleared once you're shotgun. You're going to be cleared to freelance and to hunt down and destroy any airborne MiGs if you have the fuel left. So your egress is as needed by your uh, flight lead. Escort, you guys are going to be protecting friendly strike packages and fighter sweep flights. Of course, you guys are going to be detached and you're going to be able to roam free and hunt down and destroy any uh, airborne Pirani MiGs and Mirages. So be very, very careful. You do not get sucked into any SAM traps because we only have so many Seat and Diat flights to be able to suppress all the SAMs in the heartland of the Empire of Piran. Your egress is going to be post-strike, so once the strike aircraft actually start to egress away, once they call shotgun, you are then going to be cleared off station to actually egress away from the targets. Strike flights, Dracula 1-1, that's my flight. We're going to be destroying aircraft on the ground at Curie's airfield, and of course we'll be egressing upon reaching shotgun. Stoker 9-1, be destroying shelters at Curie's. Nosferatu 2 one is going to be destroying hardened shelters at Hama from the west. Demeter 3 one is going to be destroying aircraft on the ramp at Hama from the west again. And then Wen Renfield 7-1 are going to be destroying aircraft at Aleppo Airfield. Um, keep in mind that Aleppo Airfield, for the most part, is a civilian airfield, so there are not all that many hardened shelters, and that's why you're going after just aircraft on the ramp. Um, strike package game plan for today. All aircraft will take off from home plate and proceed to marshal points. All flights will marshal at assigned altitude and push the targets as a group. USMC aircraft will attack Hama airfield from the east, while RDAF and USAF aircraft will attack Aleppo area airfields from the west, which I think I just uh, swapped those over as I was talking to you guys about the targets themselves. So <laughs> take note of that and uh, don't scratch anything out on your knee boards here, guys. Um, that was a mistake from me. On, on ingress to the target areas, Siad and Diad flights will push out in front of strike flights in order to build adequate separation for uh, getting adequate Siad and Diad coverage over the enemy air defenses. The SA-5 site at Abu al-Dahur must be knocked offline for the package to actually ingress and hit their targets. On shotgun, Siad and Diad flights are cleared to freelance and hunt down and destroy any airborne MiGs in the target areas. Fighter sweep flights are cleared to hunt and destroy any airborne MiGs once detached from the larger formation. AWACS may split SEAD and DAD flights into sections in order to provide strike flights with adequate protection from enemy MiGs, as well as adequate quit protection for any sections that are still on mission attacking enemy SAMs with HARMS or AGM 154s. Strike flights will engage assigned targets and egress on a shotgun. All remaining flights are cleared off station on final strike flight to call shotgun and egress from there. 
Moving on to our targets overview, this is just going to give you guys a bit of a uh, more zoomed in view on the targets you're going to be hitting, as well as some coordinates for those in case you have some INS difficulties or issues, as well as the altitude for those targets themselves. And remember that uh, Templar 3-1, you guys are definitely the most important flight today in hitting that SA-5 site in Naki again offline or destroying it wholesale is absolutely critical for today's mission known sam sites in the area aleppo airfield is def def defended by an sa2 guideline and sa6 gainful sites this is absolutely 100 percent confirmed by both human intelligence photographic intelligence and signals intelligence hama airfield sa6 site that is probable we only have signal intelligence on that Query's airfield is an SA-6 site. Again, that's probable. We only have signals intelligence on that. Jara airfield is an SA-3 site. That's unconfirmed. And Tabka airfield is an SA-11 site. That is also unconfirmed. These are uh, pre-war SAM sites that were emplaced at those airfields. And of course, SA-11s are very much mobile. Weather report for today, as of early this morning, um, the weather reporting station at Kalkala Airfield uh, went offline. So as of early this morning, it uh, was 270 at nine knots, 10 statute miles of visibility, scattered clouds at 15,000, scattered at 17,000, few at 270. Temperature is about 26 degrees Celsius, 15, uh, 15 degrees Celsius for the dew point. Altimeter is 3000, and our mark is a peak wind was 200 at 30 knots, uh, 280 at 30 knots. Um, again, the weather reporting equipment has been uh, knocked offline as of early this morning, and uh, so it may be unreliable. However, PI reps have kind of confirmed that the, nothing has really changed all that much today. Winds aloft, uh, not too bad today, so you might get uh, pushed a little bit as you're flying on the way home and on the way to your target. So just keep that in mind for your navigation. You may have to make some wind correction in your navigational calculations. Okay, moving to the navigational overview. Navigation today is going to be very simple, very easy. Um, all flights are going to marshal at waypoint 1. Waypoint 2 is a nav point to help guide you towards your targets. Waypoint 3 is your IP or initial point. Waypoint 4 is your target point. Waypoint 5, your egress point. And Waypoint 6, another navigational point where home plate is going to be at your Waypoint 7. For your F-14 Tomcat uh, pilots and Rios, how you place these waypoints in your INS is at your discretion. Um, and just keep in mind that your ST, IP, and FP points are not preloaded into the INS of your aircraft, and you will have to uh, assign waypoints to those points. So. TACAN navigation, you guys can see here, if you have an INS issue, you take battle damage that knocks out your INS, um, you uh, break the gyros as a result of pulling hard to uh, evade a SAM, this is your radio navigation, your TACAN channels to get back home and get to where you need to go. Alternates and divert fields, Ramat David um, is always an option, a great option. H3 Main is a good option, and Kalkala Airfield is also a good option as well. For lost comms procedures, in the event of lost comms due to aircraft damage or SRS failure, please follow these procedures. Um, failure to do so will result in disciplinary actions. Lost comms on startup do not take off. Lost comms divert field is going to be Tha'ala airfield. We have no notams uh, at the moment. Um, and uh, another divert field that should be on our kneeboard card here is going to be RAF Akrotiri from the strike package. It's going to be attacking from the west, from the coastal area. And that might be a attractive divert uh, field if you have taken battle damage and cannot make it all the way back home to the kingdom of Daimar and the airfields. Here we have a bit of a navigational overview for today to show you guys where the tanker tracks are, where the front line, the forward edge of the battle area, or FIBA, is currently in the red line, as well as, of course, our national border between the Empire of Paran and the Kingdom of Daimar, where the Palmyra oil fields are. And you can guys can see here that uh, the strike from H3 is going to be flying right over the Palmyra oil fields. So expect to take some uh, sporadic flak as you're transiting through that area. 
the Western Strike Flight uh, coming from the coastal area, you guys are going to be flying pretty far to the north to the Basal al-Assad area and then cutting inland to attack Aleppo and Quiris. And you guys can see that the SA-5 site at Abu al-Dahur is right in the middle between Hama and Aleppo areas and that is why the SA-5 site there is the critical target that needs to be knocked offline in order for the strike to continue as a whole. Tanker tracks are going to be right along your uh, tracks for navigation. And you can see here that if you do have an issue over Aleppo and you need, do need to divert, it may be worthwhile to divert to the H3 area as opposed to flying all the way back to the coast and back down south. Or you may want to divert out here to RAF Akrat Tiri. Uh, of course, you guys are the pilots in command of your aircraft and you can make that decision. So, uh, if there's not any questions or concerns here, we'll go ahead and step on out to our jets and get started, guys. Stoker flight, go ahead and uh, taxi up to, hold short of the runway for now. Copy, we'll hold short of the runway. Yeah, sure, why not? This is Stoker Flight, we are holding short of runway 25. Three rolling. Renfield Flight, are you guys uh, any closer to rolling? Renfield one one say that again. You came in broken. This is Renfield, Renfield one. Uh, we have a small device, so you can push the other flight in front of us if you need to. Roger that. All right, guys. We're gonna go ahead and taxi up to and hold short. I'll call it traffic. Uh, Dracula 1-1, one, one, flight of three F-18s, taxiing up to runway 25, holding short behind Stoker Flight. Uh, Stoker Flight, uh, you're ready. Are you guys ready to take off? Affirmative, Stoker is ready. Copy that, let's go for it. Copy that. And, uh, one from three, just confirm we only have uh, three aircraft. Ah, uh, yeah, get confirmed Stoker only three flight aircraft. Taking off on runway 35. Part of that Renfield flight, go ahead and uh, taxi out. The field is uncontrolled. Don't forget your nose wheel steering.
I'll call it traffic. Dracula 11 flight of three F-18s has the parting traffic in sight. Taking runway 25, straight out departure. One, do you uh, want us to do an interval takeoff like that? A firm. Position. Copy that. Uh, hold brakes. Run them up. Release brakes. And burn. Waypoint one. And uh, we just read. So I got three seventy in the box, slowing it down for you. Three fifty in the box. Push 305 on COM 1. Crown, this is Dracula 11, flight of three F 18s. Checking in is Frag. Dracula 11, this is Stoker 9, interrogative. Go for Dracula. Uh, what is, do we have any um, holding altitude? Uh, Standby one. Igor, 5-1, you on this frequency? Affirmative. Copy that. Uh, check IFF.
Jacket 011, Igor 51, uh, check with flight, uh, all IFF should be on. Copy that. Uh, okay, you're returning friendly now. Good to go. Roger, thanks. Roger. There's some pretty cool skins. I like them. Yep, the unit has a little cheeky Canadian fake canopy. Yeah. Okay, leveling off 250. All aircraft in the Western Strike, we're going to form up at flight level 250 for the formation. F-16s for SEAD, if you're unable to four, or 250, uh, form up at 230. Kepler flight copies 230. Solar flight, Wilco 250. Mason 2, Wilco flight level 250. Uh, it looks like our E2s are having problems, so uh, we may have to go it alone. Currently receiving data link. Copy that Crusader flight. Uh, Red Crown seems to be having difficulties. Uh, we may have to go it alone. Continue holding at your uh, assigned marshal point. If it save you guys a little fuel, you can spread it out a bit. No need to be so close. Alright, three is moving to cruise on your left. Four up and right. Copy. And uh, Dracula flight, make sure you get those uh, JDAMs turned on. JDAMs are on and in TOO, both sets. Copy.
Dispatch, Mike and I are checking in on that, uh, 60 miles from Marshall. Copy that. Entering the Marshall stack, right hand orbit at two three thousand feet. I'd be that Templar. that run field. We're going to get into a uh, formation here for the strike flights. Back crown, this is Frankenstein. You understand? Uh, Frankenstein is not on this frequency. Um, we're going to have to go it alone without a GCI. Stoker, this is Dracula 1 1. We're on your 4 o'clock now. You go ahead and join up on the brief formation on us. Entering the, the turn. Firm as briefed, check the knee board for the uh, formation position. Copy that, we'll rejoin you. Dracula 1-1, this is Igor 5-1, we are in the Marshall stack at 25,000. Uh, do you want us to go ahead and join the formation as well? Yep, go ahead and join the formation as briefed. And, uh, one, three, aggression four, do you want us in, like, echelon, or is this okay, we're on that uh, buffering tip? Yeah, this is fine right now. Shelly Flight, you're cleared to join the formation. And uh, Frankenstein Flight, are you guys at the Marshall stack? Copy that, Frankenstein. 
Strike Ludwig 6 is uh, on station at Marshall. Got that, Ludwig. Flights in the Western Strike be advised. Uh, strike leads currently orbiting at Mach 0.75 for the join up. I concur, Mach uh, 0.61. Just round two, this is Templar. I read you 5x5. Five five. I copy, uh, Strike Lead Perry not answering me for some reason. Can you inform him that um, my flight is one minute from my uh, marshal? Roger that, this round two, break. Uh, Dracula, this is Templar. Uh, go for Dracula. Copy that. Uh, Nosferatu, Dracula 1-1. One, one. Dracula 1-1, one, Nos flight. Uh, roger that. Uh, go ahead and hold at your marshal point for now, and uh, we'll get you guys going as soon as possible. I guess, uh, Frankenstein, Tom Wells from, uh, Marshall. Recommend to get the ball rolling and things for the last people. Copy that. Copy that. Occult Freemason Templar flights, go ahead and push. Strike lead Dracula 1 1 flights currently Mach 0.65. All flights, all flights, strike lead, Dracula 1-1 is pushing to target area, waypoint 2. Okay, flight, uh, we're... All flights in the eastern strike, this is strike lead, continue holding in the Marshall stack.
Dracula, Igor is in position. Eyes on Igor. Uh, we're out of position on the left side. Uh, we're uh, gonna shackle right now. Copy that. Uh, got you in sight, uh, Dracula 1-1. Dracula, Renfield Flight in position. Got you in sight, Renfield Flight. Thank you very much. So, Dracula 1 1, strike lead to Occult, Freemason, Templar flights. Go ahead and Buster. Go push uh, Mach 0.85 to waypoint 2. Mason. Occult. Templar copies. Crusader flight uh, Dracula 1 1. Go ahead and hold at your Marshall point. Right. Dracula 1 1, this is Stoker flight. We are saddled on your left. Got you in sight, Stoker flight Dracula 1 1. Thank you. Western strike package. Uh, this is Dracula 1 1 strike lead, slowing it down to Mach 0.6 to allow aircraft to catch up and allow the SEAD flights to push out in front. Templar 3-1, Dracula 1-1, one, one, push directly to your target area. It's going to be waypoint 4. Dracula, Templar, was that traffic for me? A firm, Templar 3-1, push directly towards your target area, waypoint 4. Roger, copy, pushing waypoint 4. Roger that. Thank you, Shelly.
Crusader 4 1, Dracula 1 1, you're cleared to push to your target. Roger, uh, Crusader Flight is uh, heading direct to uh, target point. Uh Nosferatu, to Dracula 1-1, one, one. you're cleared to push, follow current waypoints. Slash Bravo flight copies. All Western Strike Flights, Strike Leads pushing speed up to Mach 0.7. Frankenstein flight and Shelley flight. This is Dracula 1 1. You're cleared to fly directly towards the IP point. Frankenstein, copy. Shelley flight, copy. Copy that. Uh, you're cleared to go hunting. All flights be advised. This is Strike Lead. Looks like multiple bandits coming out of Aleppo airfield. Looks like they're low.
Templar 3-1, Dracula 1-1. Are you able to get your pod onto the SA-5 site yet? Hey, friend, we've got him locked up. We're within minimums. We're going to fire here in just a moment. Copy that. Western Strike, uh, all flights come right towards the IP point. Strike lead has bandits. Bulls two three five for twenty nine at two three zero. Top of three two Magnum one harm. Let's see that. Top of three four Magnum SA five. Uh, Shelling Frankenstein flight looks like the bandits uh, split up into two sections. One looks like they're going for Frankenstein, one looks like they're going for Shelly. Roger that, got this, we got the spike. Copy that. That's Splash from Shelly Flight. Roger. Temple 3 1 Fox 3, MiG 23. 1 3, Fox 3, Bandit North. Copy that. All SEAD flights, disregard the MiGs. Shelly and Frankenstein flights are on them. Templar 3 1, your primary target's the SA 5 site. Frankenstein 2 1, Fox 3, East Group. Alright, fence in, guys, if you happen already. Copy that. I think we're doing good on fuel. I'm at 12.2. Uh, Somewhat 3, 2, Fox 3. I'll call 1, one Fox 3. Copy that. Go ahead and continue. Yeah, mine seemed to have reset as well. That's kind of odd. Western Strike Flights, we're pushing it up to Mach 0.8.
Frankenstein and Shelley. We still got single bandit. He's bulls two one zero for thirty five. Angels two four. Two one zero for two five. Angels thirty four. Shelley three. Copy that. Good job, good job. Go ahead and kill the tracking radar for that SA-5 as well from Dracula-1. Hey, friend. Hey, boy, on up. Shelly and Frankenstein flights. We got new group bandits. Uh, 130 for 80 miles. Angels, 35. Frankenstein, uh, proceeding to Wazenda. Rockland package to spin. 1-3, check speed. Copy that, thanks. Yeah. Bandit faded, Bulls 190 for 32, Angels unknown. Magnum search rate as they went for. Copy that. Single bandit, bulls 200 for 31, altitude unknown. Frankenstein 2 1 committed, bandit 3 ship over uh, target waypoint. Copy that. All strike flights, you're cleared to your targets once hitting IP point. Copy that, I got that spike as well. Turning towards him. Are we, are we committing? Yeah, let's go ahead and commit on him. Shall we uh, confirm you are uh, hitting the west group? Good boy. Clean that picture. Sure, three one is chasing uh, ultimately 23 angels 1 5. And one from four, just want to verify we are committing on this bandit. We are. He's close. He's close. He's down at fourteen. One four thousand. Right here. Check the one one ten plus three four. Be advised. Break. Alright, four six six five. Visual uh, engaging. Uh, Under that three. Near the shooter. I don't see him yet. Magnum. Three. Uh, no joke. Oh, I see him. I see him. He's at our six o'clock. Dracula one three, Fox two. Never mind, good splash, whoever hit that twenty three. Nice shot, nice shot. Twenty nine spike on three does. Four, I got four. Correction, five, twenty nine. Twelve o'clock. Copy that. Alright, Dracula 1-1's one, intermix with Shelly Flight. Be careful about blue on blue shots. Four is rejoining. Package flux to the left band at 26,000 feet, 36 miles. Uh, southwest of Target Air. Frankenstein 2 3, Fox 3. Three heading to rejoin on a uh, one. Copy that three. Um, look for these MiG twenty nines here. We got MiG twenty nine spike on the nose. Yeah. Yeah, them. All right. Looks like there's two of them right on our nose this here. This is Fox Street, MiG twenty nine. Olympic three, Fox three, banded uh, twenty seven thousand. Copy that. Dracula 1-1 will back you up on those same bandits. Two's got... Christian 4's got a lock on bandit lead. Copy. Not firing. Fox 3. The... Uh, 4 stallion bandit, lost 
Splash band at 20,000. Yeah, I'm not sorted yet. I'm still trying to get him on my radar. All right. Three has lock on the front MiG-29. All right, three, uh, go ahead and fire on the front MiG-29. I'll take the rear. Request permission to fire. Go ahead and fire. Go ahead and shoot him. He's turning. Dracula 1-3, three, Fox 3, MiG-29. Fire on the trail, Fox 3 on the trail. Yeah, mate. He's firing on, firing on me. Sure, if you're Fox 3, 29. 4, Fox 3, MiG-29. Alright, right, one splash, one splash. The high MiG-29 is still alive. Igor, 5-1, splash 1. Nice, nice shot, Igor. All right, the high, the high MiG twenty nine is looks like he's uh, retreating. He's splash on the high MiG twenty nine. Copy that. Oh yeah, he's splash. Thanks. I don't know if I got him or someone else did, but he's going down. Yep, Roger that. Visual on that now. Uh, one's angels. Uh, one's angels two zero. Copy that. I'm looking for you guys. Occult 1-1, one, one, Magnum on SA-6. Copy that, Occult. Thank you. 1, confirm altitude, uh, like, uh, two zero. Yeah, 2 zero, zero, two, one, zero. One has a shack on 1 SA-6. Stoker, 9-2, Paveway, times 2. Copy that. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, flow air to ground at this point. Three. All Western strike flights be advised. Looks like uh, airspace is clear at this time. All strike flights we commit to air to ground. Uh, yeah, get rid of him. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, I think that the other one was either my AMRAM, uh, 3's AMRAM, or, uh, either, or could have been Cortana as well. Yeah, I was, mine took a while to get there, so, uh, so I got it out of cool space for the street. Yeah, my AMRAM went dead immediately, I lost a lot. The other one, one has, that, that say, six, like... Within about a mile, and it got smacked by something. Now we got a little cloud cover between us and the target here. Early Mach point eight. I've got eyes on aircraft at the end of the runway at the uh, arming pits. I'll take those aircraft if you guys want to take air aircraft that are on the southern ramp of the airfield.
Labs, we should be good. Alright. Yeah, Roger, we should have a nice clear path to target now. SA6, Spike, Tunnel Con. Ranfield 7-2. Yep, Roger. Egress and target under. Contact on the southern ramp. Three will hit the uh, right side of the ramp. Copy that. That SA6 site is off to my. Yeah, it's here on SA. We're out to the range. We're going to uh, the way to, uh, Yeah, roger right that. Alright, three is committing on the right side of the southern ramp. Copy that. Uh, one's currently hitting the, uh, looks like four MiG-29s and a MiG-21 at the end of the airfield. You are blocked. One, do you want us to prioritize fighters or helos? Uh, fighters. I got a block of four MiG-29s I'm hitting in between some helos on the southern ramp. Copy that. Dracula, one, one, paveway times two. Alright, I kept two of them. I'm gonna come back around for a second pass after I get BDA from you guys. Four, just confirm you hit those uh, six ring aircraft on the. all the helos are. Ooh, we're taking flak. Yeah, I hit the four that are in between the two sets of MI 24. <laughs> Definitely got flak on the ramp down there. Break, break, break. SA6 launch, Quarries. Shack, four missile right. rounds, unknown. Nice shot. I'll go fly his shotgun. Looks like I got shacks as well. I'm gonna go for those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Copy that. Copy. I'm going to be coming back around for a second pass once we get uh, impacts from uh, 4. 4 will be estimated uh, 1 minute. Uh, 4, be advised there's flak down there and they know you're coming. Roger, I'm at Angels 18, I should be good. Are you going after those, they're either Mirages or MiG-21s at the uh, western edge of the ramp down there? That. Uh, three, I'm turning back around towards the target. I've got a uh, new target. Dracula, Frankenstein 2 1 committed, four ship, MiG 25, in from the northeast. Copy that, Frankenstein. They're all yours. Watch out for, uh, we got SA 6 spikes from the east there. Frankenstein's so going on the 25s. Roger, taking flak fire, no factor at this moment though. Dracula 1 1 uh, paveway times 2. 
All right, looks like the SA6 site down there has decided to open back up, so just be careful on that. Turn your music on. Roger. All right, let's egress back, waypoint five. Copy that. Three's about one mile behind you, coming to join up and then head to waypoint five. Copy that, I'm at 400 in the box. Box one. Uh, Spike 25, egressing, uh, south, shack, uh, four mirage. Copy that, nice shots. Uh, uh, four, make an immediate 180 turn to your right. Two, um, five, spike, uh, uh, Roger. Copy that. Frankenstein, Dracula 11, do you have the S8, uh, you have the MiG 25 staying care of? Frankenstein, Dracula 11, Splash, what time is that for Copy that, thank you. Alright, I just flew directly into an SA-6, so I'm going to be making a quick turn here, then heading towards waypoint 5. Copy, looks like 4 was defending SA-6. Yeah, copy that. SA-6 is at the other airfield at Aleppo Field, seem to be still on the air. Crusader 4-3, Magnum SA-6. on the deck. Oh, copy that. Are you defending? Roger that. Getting uh, four, correction three, I see six over nine flight. We are shotgun and RPB. All right, one's defensive, SA-6. Three tally smoke trails. Oh shit, this isn't good. Alright, they're trashed. Has uh, uh, defeated those other missiles. Copy that, uh, that was not received. What was that? Four is uh, defeated those missiles. I'm still on the deck, getting spikes from that SA-6 that was east of the target area. Uh, copy that. Uh, you should be clear of those SA-6 to the east of the target area. The ones to the west are the ones you want to worry about. Fly to the south of waypoint 5 for now. Four, roger. You're crashing waypoint 5. I'm right at your 3 o'clock, 4. Yeah, I copy that. Light and ineffective at the moment. Dracula 1 1 is shotgun egressing waypoint 5. Stoker 9-1, this is uh, Dracula 1-1, one, one. check in. Uh, I've got uh, 365 in the box, Mach 7-5. I just realized uh, I forgot to set TOO on one of them. Thankfully the splash damage got all four of them, but... Nice shots, though. The good thing is aircraft are about the softest targets on the planet. Copy that.
Western Strike aircraft. This is Strike Lead. All aircraft are cleared off station. All of the Strike aircraft are shotgun. Wounded copies, we're on our way out. We'll cover your retreat. Copy that. Miller time for uh, all flights on the Western Strike. Nosferatu flight to uh, check in. Uh, you're cleared off station one shotgun. Uh, shark lead, last ride will fight, roger. We have one last bomb to drop and we're breaking off. Copy that. Three can confirm, sun is a deadly laser, crossing over to the right. Sun is a deadly laser. Got you in sight. Uh, 340 in the box, uh, Mach 0.75. I'm going to go ahead and continue the climb. I'll we'll climb up to like uh, 250 and see what uh, our range is looking like. Nosferatu 2 2 1 and Crusader 4 1 flight. You guys are cleared off station at this time. Western flight is also egressing. Level one off. I think the SEAD flights took some casualties, though, unfortunately. At least that's what it sounded like on the way in. Well, the exchange rate seems decent. Absolutely. I would say while trying to keep track of all the jets that really degraded my situational awareness in my own cockpit, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's a same, shame we didn't have uh, contact with the E2. Yeah. I didn't even realize that MiG-23 was basically merged with us until it was right at us. Yeah, I didn't see him the whole time. He came right up at us with a, like a giraffe attack or something. Yeah, I noticed that he was uh, like five miles, so I just looked down and I saw him visually. I was like, oh, guess I'll engage him. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you saw him visually because I was looking. I did not see him, but I saw those two MiG-29s right off the bat, obviously because they were, they were uh, conning. Yeah, unfortunately, I was screwing up and uh, I was selecting aim 7s instead of aim 9, so I didn't get a shot off until uh, he was already down. Yeah. No, strictly, this is... Uh, it's got a uh, work in there, uh, I remember which one. direction does what. I was going to select the uh, targets, SA-66. Copy that. Uh, with Nosferatu flight, uh, shotgun and egressing, you guys are cleared to egress as well at your discretion. Oh shit, we're taking flak. We're taking flak. Anyone see, anyone see that puff of uh, flak off our right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
strike package Rainfield. Rainfield flight is currently having troubles uh, reaching the tankers on Takan. Any anything that was? Stand by. So uh, Since flak is no factor at the moment, it's only one puff or a few puffs. Copy that. I heard it before I saw it. That's why it freaked me out. Yeah, I had you guys on my TGP and all I see is black smoke. For whoever was just asking about the tankers, use X-Ray, not Yankee. Yeah, strike lead can confirm the tankers are currently operating on band X-ray, not Yankee. Someone let the three P's touch the tack and dial. Right here, confirms. Thing you're mad in the tanker just had an hump. I'm doing good on fuel. I'm uh, six point eight. Yeah, copy. I'm at uh, seven point one. Yeah, we should have plenty of fuel to get home, uh, unless you guys want to hit the tanker. No, I'm good. I feel confident. Copy that. Not like we can bolt her out of field. Three, you want to take uh, the lead and lead us home? Uh, three's got lead. Copy. Come in on your wing. That sun is definitely bright. Roger. Alright, coming left for waypoint six. The good thing is you guys don't have any flak damage. Bingo. That's good. I didn't even hit my counter but the countermeasure button once. I pretty much panicked and dropped the bucket when those SA sixes were that close to me. Launches that just came at me out of nowhere, so I just dumped just kind of my just hit the deck. Yeah, both of you guys had, they, they launched a whole uh, launcher's worth of missiles at you guys. <laughs> they sure did. Strike, crazy, field flight is gonna go for shell tanker and switching frequency. Copy that, you're cleared off frequency. Yeah, that, uh, altitude hold, uh, just did some weird shit, I'm gonna fly manual. How to push, so one. The first thing they teach you about an autopilot is how to turn it off. Cause you flash back to that case 3 wedge where it went all wonky at. Yeah, where it just started making me climb and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Usually isn't that a trim issue? Like if you're if you accidentally try to trim the jet out with the autopilot on, it goes all wonky like that. Yeah, but the the couple squadron was doing a case three uh, flight yesterday, and the ATC is just so broken. One four two six hundred.
one from J on a VA. Alright, you ready to go? I think we've had pretty good hits. I ended up uh, on my second pass. I skipped, or not skipped, but I put two uh, J dams right at the entrance of two shelters that had MIGs in them. Nice. Kind of wish I had my shadow play going. The quadruple ripple on the MiG 29s looked pretty nice. Nice. But with that flak on those SA6s, I'm glad we had J dams because sticking around to laze those. Blaze laser guided bombs into those things would have been rough. That would have been a death sentence, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think we needed the uh, extra accuracy uh, of the LGBs. The JDMs were good enough. Absolutely. Alright, just a warning, I'm attempting the barometric altitude hold again. Copy. Alright, it cooperated this time. Very good. Quite well, you know if there's any, like, set regs for Echelon. It's just kinda whatever it looks. I haven't done TAC forms yet, I've only ever done basic forms. They just parade and cruise, is that it? Yeah, it's two ship. says this covers section and division, and then mentions nothing about division flying. Nice. Sounds about right. Recording. And those makes were so all over the place with such different altitudes that I swear my radar elevation button does not work fast enough. I had it just hit so many times. Yeah, I went right from engaging that MiG-23 at 14,000 to when we turned to the fulcrums that were at 34,000. <laughs> yeah. That poor F-16 up there is all by himself. He's just lost and they didn't lose the whole flight. Hopefully. I think one of those SEAT flights got hit hard though. Everything's great, the F-16. At least they took out that SA-5 because that would have been a pain in the butt. So they get smacked at 70 miles. Yeah, if you're flying straight and level like we are now, an SA-5 will eat your lunch. Oh yeah. Also, people assume they can last ditch it since it's a big missile, but it's semi-active homing, so it will follow you into a last ditch maneuver, no problem. Yeah. Last ditch is pretty much only good against like SA-19, 2, and 3.
puts on this mission, Spud? Say again? Did you put Skynet on this mission? Oh yeah, that's why those SA-6s, like, got us at the last minute there. That's what I thought, I was like, there's no way the normal would do that. Yeah, the normal one won't launch the whole magazine at us as well. Yeah. I think I got three or four smoke trails when I was on the deck that I saw. I think I saw three, and I think there were four after me. They really don't like us. Apparently not. Yeah, I wonder why. you when it has its own fighters in its weapon engagement zone. Yeah, that would be... That would be kind of cool. Is, uh... Strike Lyptic 6, uh, all planes are, uh, leaving the Should area. Coded in, like, Lua, like Lua script that you can edit. Copy that, uh, Strike League copies all. It is. I've also seen fighters drag me in the spam traps before. Uh, Nosferatu flight go for strike lead. Is it like a separate well, point? Roger, that. we are cleared to target area. We're just, switching to yeah, uh, the main script. tower. And then import that. Copy that. Uh, see you later. We'll see you in the briefing hut. For what? So, I know you have to probably like uh, add the Lua file to the mission, but is it like a separate plugin for Skynet? I don't know what you mean, plugin. It, you just add the scripts and it runs. Okay, okay, that's right. That's right. Like, you know, Wondering if you had to add something to like the mods folder. Nope. Got it. Alright, we'll start descending after waypoint 6 and we'll head straight into the break at altitude of 3300. Copy that. Sure. Are we planning on landing 2-5 again? Yeah, the winds are favoring it. Okay. Also back over blue lines, we can go master arm safe. Copy that, safen up the switches. And two fenced out, 5.4. One's fenced out, 5.8. Fenced out, 5.2. I know how I'm low state when I didn't have to defend any missiles. Uh, fuck. Buddy Spike, Mirage 2000. The only time I really used burners was takeoff and then pouring on the coals with those SAMs. Descending. I think I had my detents set wrong, because I wasn't going past my detents. I don't have a detent, so I just kind of guess. Usually works. When you normally go into per uh, is it like when you enter the break, or like when you're on the upwind uh, over the runway, or is it like before? We had very specific stuff for our airfield, so we'd enter parade at about right about as we were hitting the initial. Got it. So if you guys 
guys want to think ahead, we're going to... Never mind, you guys are on the right side, because we're going to have to loop around 180. A firm for left break. Mirage 2000 on the wing of the F-18. If you want to switch to uh, 265, that's uh, our frequency. Say again. Where would you like us to be? Uh, your choice. If you want to head back to your home base, that works for us. Uh, otherwise, uh, Dracula 1 3 currently has to leave the formation. Strong show flight. Uh, we're formed up. To, uh, we're going to make a 180 turn for landing on runway 25 at Kalakala. And so we're already in echelon right for the left hand break. Just join you for that. Sounds good. Coming right for one three two. Two. And uh, Dracula 1-4, just keep it nice and gentle. I sense a really nice screenshot opportunity up here. It's pretty nice. Renfield flight, back on through this here. Copy that, Renfield flight. Uh, you're cleared to proceed directly to the airfield. Dracula Igor flights, let's push uh, the Kala Kala CTAF. You just stay here. We got your comps. Okay. Let's just hope that those uh, conscripted operators of that Patriot battery don't get overzealous.
Marshall on Kalaka. Actually, I'm going to come left a bit so it's not as jarring of a turn once we get to the initial. Two. One. Four. Five. Oh, just had a little bit of G6 there, my bad.
a break. Copy that, Dracula flight will extend. I'll call a tower. Is Stoker flight uh, in the upwind for the overhead, or are they doing a straight in? Uh, I believe they're doing a straight in. Uh, negative. Stoker is doing an overhead. Uh, my apologies. All right, then that means that uh, Dracula flight is going to be coming in for the landing as they're in the upwind for the overhead. Then for Drac Dracula and I go clear for landing. And uh, three, were you trying to transmit on uh, the Kala Kala traffic frequency? Uh, which time did I screw that up? Uh, it just seemed like you weren't talking to you on that frequency at all. I was wondering if maybe you were having a trouble, hard having a hard time transmitting on it. Ah, uh, I'm an idiot. I went two eight five point zero. <laughs> That'll do it. I got the landing clearance, so there was no runway incursion, so we're good. And that from a sign was ugly, holy crap.
a four, I would say you're trying to be too close in your formation. Like, you don't literally need to have, like, your wing in between, you know, just aft of his wing for the parade formation for a break. Yeah, I was trying to get it to the, the, the knee tops, the knee top spec, but... I don't trust that knee tops parade, it is way too goddamn close. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of waiting for four to desync and erase three there for most of the flight. <laughs> Yeah, Natops Parade is a uh, Sidewinder formation light on the uh, Lex formation light with the um, engines basically in line with each other. Your wingtips overlap at that point. Yeah, and that's probably not the best place to be in a DCS server. Yeah, to Benfield aircraft cleared. You are currently cleared to land on runway 25. It does look cool if you can do it, though. That's true. Chris, we're going to go to his north border five ready for field flight. Soaker nine one cleared the runway. Shot a lot on my turn to disregard. Maybe if I start putting flights of five on the sign up sheet, we'll lose one and we'll actually get flights of four. <laughs> that was cool. Three to break. Uh, 
who turned off the wrong one. Aren't I supposed to be parking next to you? If you took that uh, full end, it would... So we could rearm for deep. Yeah. That's fine, you can take the other... Yes, sir, the next pilot. Uh, we should have made a hard left, Cortana. Oh well, I guess we'll see where this goes. Uh, well, there's room for Cortana. You might want to turn for the other one. I can just park in front of it like a badass. See you guys in the debrief. See you there.